Hi, it's Janine Turner, and this is your God on the Go Minute. Um, alrighty, let's see where we are. Oops, that's not the right place. Here we go. Second Chronicles fourteen eleven. I'm going to read part of Well, I'll read all of it. Um, Asa cried to the Lord his God, O oh Lord, there is no difference for you between helping the mighty and the weak. Help us, O oh Lord our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this multitude. O oh Lord, you are our God. Let no mortal prevail against you. So as I was reading this and contemplating with the Lord about it. Um, what stood out for me is, oh Lord, there is no difference for you between helping the mighty and the weak. Yeah. So (laughs) there's an element of duh to that, right? All of this is, I mean, we, we know this so well and, and so, so much of it is, but it's the contemplation in a new way every day, a new perspective or a reminder, um, to me is what's so important. It's the, it's the, uh, what, what amazes me about con- the continuous aspect of reading the Bible every day over and over and over again is you think, well, I've read it, but no, there's something that's revealed that God reveals through that particular scripture on that day to me or to you that, uh, you never really thought about it before. You missed it that other time or it didn't apply to you then, but it applies to you now. God speaks through the scripture. And so every time you read it, there'll be something new and different uh, to see. So, so there's never really a duh, you know, (laughs) because it's all an interpretation of the time and the moment and things um, sleep from the page that maybe didn't before. So, oh Lord, there's no difference for you between helping the mighty and the weak in second chronicles 14 11 um and i'm thinking about the pandemic and what we're dealing with now and the mighty and the weak well the mighty let's interpret however mighty weak however you want to the mighty or the rich the weak or the poor the mighty or the healthy the the weak or the sick um and i i feel that the message for me today is that how often we give our false idols the power to help the mighty and the weak. What are the false idols? Um, Government, um, other entities, anybody other than ourselves, anybody other than God. Um, And it's the temptation for us to say, well, the government needs to help the, the, the mighty and the weak. And then we rely on these senators that become sort of idols or the president idols or, uh, uh, you know, we, we turn to them and say, fix it. You have to fix it. And interestingly enough, when we do that, the responsibility goes away from God and it goes away from ourselves. And uh, of course, we are, we the people and our taxpaying money and the government should help the weak and Not to think that the mighty don't need it too. That's a whole other element of this verse. It's not you help the mighty and the weak. We immediately just go to the weak. But the mighty need help too. This illusion that money, uh, you know, takes care of everything. The the rich are some of the most troubled people in the world. Many of these these sicknesses and diseases and addictions, they, they don't know class structures. They don't abide by that. But it, we all need help, the mighty and the weak. But, 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 so yes, our taxpayer money should go to the government. The government should do what was right. And we have the right as a people to make sure our government does what they should do. But I feel our focus is too much on these false idols in the government. What about prayer? <laughs> you know, the, the, and I know we pray, but the intensity of prayer, the, 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 that prayer is the first thing we think about. God, help the mighty and the weak. Help these people that are that are rich. Help these people that are poor. Help everybody in between. Help the people that are sick with this pandemic. Mighty and weak. Rich or poor. And the power of what God can do to combat this evil that is prevalent and pervasive in our globe, our earth today. It's just thought-provoking to me. 
And, you know, somehow when we pray, then we personally become more involved in it. We take more ownership of it through the prayer. And God, then we have a direct line and God will guide us how we may help, how we can make a difference, how we're called to do anything. Well, what can I do right now? I'm stuck in my house. Well, I don't know. I've been, I've been donating money to this and that and uh, helping with these God on the goes. I mean, we all have something in this day and time that we can do with, with, with um, prayer. Once again, <laughs> prayer, prayer. God can guide you, social media, to help people in any way. But it's just interesting to think about today, the fact that we should not turn to false idols because they're infallible. And right now we're thinking, why did, why did the president do more? Why don't the governors do more? We're just, you know, we're blaming. Soon this is going to become a huge blame game, and it's so dark to blame. Instead of just going to the Lord in prayer. God is the one that's ultimately in charge of this and is ultimately will heal it and ultimately will whisper in all of our ears collectively to be a part of the solution. So we need to look to God to fix it and quit expecting these false idols to have the power, the knowledge. They're infallible too. Everyone truly, I think, with this pandemic is trying to do the best they can. But God is, God is the one. God is the answer. So prayer, prayer, prayer to God is my takeaway from this today. Have a blessed day.